Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Andrea Trowski with Dental L. Let me go through the four week study guide for you for the Danby's Radiation Health and Safety Exam Prep. So, the four week study guide has been taken from your candidate handbook, your RHS study guide. Okay, so that's where it's been taken from. So, everything that they tell you you have to study for the exam in order to pass, it's been taken from that. You can also see all of those uploads inside the course directly from their website site if you need a little refresher too. So they recommend one of the tools you should be using, using is the Modern Dental Assisting Textbook 13 edition. So I've kind of compiled all of that with all of the study resources that they suggest, but I've summarized it all, which I will show you guys in a moment here. I've summarized it all for you to make it easier to study from in four weeks time. If you have two weeks to take the exam, don't worry, just compress everything into two weeks, very simple. If you have six months to study for the exam, that's okay too, you can stretch it out. But what I've done is I've gone over kind of a review of what you have to study week one, week two, week three, and week four. And this all includes um, radiation, x-rays, quality assurance, infection control, ethics, um, legal responsibilities, everything you have to know as a dental assistant. And then I've broken the weeks down so you can review everything from week one. And then I'll just kind of show you guys here, everything from week two <laughs> and then week three and then week four. And then I even go into a little more about quality, um, quality assurance, infection control. I go over a little bit more ethical responsibilities, but I do it in a much easier study format here. And then once you log in inside the course and you're able to go through everything, I'm then going to teach you this as well in a video such as this one, because some of you are going to prefer to read through things. Some of you might prefer to listen to me talk. So I do a little bit of both because everybody's different. And then of course, there will be quizzes, tests, exams to really test your knowledge to make sure you truly understand what I've been teaching you inside the course. Okay, so you have a really good idea. I skipped through this very quickly. This is about 41 pages, but you can see the whole thing inside your course, of course. So let me just go up though to do a quick rundown. So week one's topic here. So radiation basics and safety. So this is just kind of going through everything. How are x-rays produced? What are the history? What does it mean to talk about primary, secondary, and scatter radiation? And what does as low as reasonably achievable mean when it comes to radiation, right? We, we want to expose the client, the patient, as little as possible. So that means taking the x-rays perfectly the first time I mean, nobody can be perfect, but as close to perfect as possible is better to do that the first time. We don't want to just aim and shoot and hope for the best. And then we end up taking the same x-ray five times on the same patient, or we don't want to take an x-ray we know we're having trouble with it. Maybe we're a new dental assistant. We don't ask for help, but we just keep trying. So we go through that in great detail because this is very important. And then patient protection services. So what do we do to protect the patient? Could it mean using a different tube head? Could it mean using a lead apron? So we go through all of that. And then equipment safety features. So you need to know the difference between collimation and filtration. For example, collimation restricts the size of the beam and the filter filters out the radiation so we don't get as much scatter radiation. But what about PID types? There are different PID types that might expose the patient to less radiation due to the shape and size of it. So don't worry, we talk about all of that. Now what about week two? We go over equipment a little bit more so techniques and errors. Being able to recognize what you're doing wrong is so important. Being able to recognize a good x-ray from a bad x-ray is so important. And don't worry, we go through all of that. Being able to know the difference between paralleling and bisecting. Paralleling is always preferred because you get a really good angle, a really good shot, because how can you miss? But what if your office doesn't have that? You need to know bisecting as well. Or maybe you're trying to take an x-ray on a wisdom tooth. Maybe they, they have an extra wisdom tooth that you really need the x-ray from inside the mouth. Bisecting might be the better option. So you do need to know both types. And of course, they're going to ask you on the exam. Now, what about different types of x-rays? 
bite wings, periapicals, occlusals, panoramic. We go through all of that. Patient and film sensor positioning. Now on the exam, you will only be responsible for knowing digital x-rays. They're not going to ask you questions about manual type of x-rays, you know, the processor, developer, putting that in. I do add a little bit inside the course as well because I do feel like it's important to be able to recognize the difference from both, but don't worry, they won't ask you questions on manual x-ray taking and the chemicals, but I do teach you guys a little bit about that inside the course because why not? And then common technique errors, cone cutting, overlapping, elongation, foreshortening, there's so much more. Don't worry. We talk about all of that. And do you know the difference between milliamperage and KVP? What if the film is too dark? How do you adjust the settings? What if the film is too light? How do you adjust the settings? And then going over to week three, processing, mounting, and interpretation. So manual and automatic film processing steps. Again, we go through this a little bit, but they really do focus on digital x-ray taking on the exam. I have had students tell me in the past they had one or two questions that didn't really focus on you know, the different type of taking x-rays, like they don't focus on that package with the foil, all of that, but they kind of ask little questions or they mention it in a question. Um, and then the answer is based off of that. So we still talk about the manual and the automatic processing and a little bit about the chemicals, but again, they focus mainly on digital x-ray taking. Um, darkroom setup and safe light, digital radiography system. So there's different systems. There's the sensor, there's the phosphoric plate. I've been able to use both of them. I prefer the sensor personally, but the phosphoric plate is just like the actual film that we used to use many, many moons ago, right? Some offices probably still use it. Um, we go through mounting. How does that work? The patient's left side and the right side is going to be different when you're mounting perhaps, right? And then you need to be able to recognize anatomy. So I do go through anatomy with you because you need to be able to know where the sinuses are on the x-ray. Um, would you see the sinus in a bite wing? Would you only see a sinus in a panoramic? What does it actually look like? And how will you be explaining that to a patient if they have questions? And then how to detect common pathology, x-rays, anything that doesn't look quite right, or, you know, it's, it's normal, but it might look like a cavity such as cervical burnout. That's completely normal. But if you didn't know the difference, you would see that radiolucent area and think it's a cavity, but it's really not. What about bone loss, cysts, calculus? We go through all of that. Now, what about week four? So this is mainly infection control. We talk about everything that has to do with infection control. Think disinfection, sterilization, different types of diseases. We go through all of that, but then we also go through ethics and legal responsibilities. So what are your legal responsibilities working in an office as a dental assistant, as just a regular person? What about keeping things confidential? All of that fun stuff. So week four focuses on, think about infection control, quality and insurance and ethics. And then as I mentioned, I take it a step further and I break everything down for you. Now this is really a summarization. So this is a week from week one to week four summarization of everything. For example, in week one, when we talk about x-ray production and machine components, I break down the cathode anode control panel. You could read your chapter in the modern dental assisting text. There's gonna be five paragraphs all about the cathode and then five more about the anode. But what do you have to know for the exam? Let's keep it simple, straight to the point. That's what this study guide is for. It's negative electrode that produces electrons. Again, you can read your textbook if you prefer, but you're going to be reading pages on just the cathode. Let's keep it simple. What do you have to know for the exam? Let's just only study what you have to know for the exam, right? That's most important. And that's why you would sign up for a tutoring course because you don't want to just read your textbook. So that's what this four week study guide does. It breaks it all down for you. But let's say you were going through this four week study guide and, and, and you said, I want to know more about the cathode though. Well, don't worry. I do break it down. I kind of explain it a little bit more inside the course as well. So make sure to look at those study guide documents. Make sure to also watch the videos where I teach it all to you. Okay. So I break it all down, you guys. There you go. Have fun with it. 
If you have any questions, let me know. And if you're taking your exam shortly or you have time, you get full access to the self-paced course. So everything is pre-recorded and pre-uploaded inside the course. It's actually currently being updated now, depending on when you watch the video. It is May 27th, 2025. Crazy, eh? Time goes by so fast. But I'm currently updating everything this week. So that means new videos, new, new study guide documents, documents, new quizzes, all of that. But once you do log in after it's being updated, you get full access to everything. You don't have to wait when the next class is or when the next test is. I have it all in there for you after the updates and you can access it any time, which is much preferred by a lot of students who don't necessarily have the time to study with me every evening or every Saturday. They want to study on their own time, but they also want to move ahead too if they have extra time. So that's why a Dental L's course is perfect because you have the best of both worlds. You can log in anytime, but you could also ask me questions anytime as well. Make sure to join the members only Facebook group. You have the link inside your course and you can ask me questions, network with other students, anytime you like. And that's really the best way to study. You kind of study first the study guide documents, watch the teaching videos, and then take the mock exam practice test to really test your knowledge. And then ask me questions because I am here to support you. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you need anything. Click like if you like this video. I do hope this helped you prepare and start to study for your exam. And if you want to go more in depth, sign up for the course if you haven't already, because I go through everything for you. You don't need to purchase the textbook. You don't even need to look through your textbook if you get my Dental L prep course, because I have already used the textbook for you. I've summarized everything and made it easier to study. So thank you guys. I will talk to you soon and see you in the next one.